So the ENIAC was a, a 1946 innovation. And of course, at that time, there were a lot of people vying for the first automated computer. But these things were really huge, and they covered you know, the wall to ceiling and large floor spaces um, dedicated to just a single computer that could maybe calculate a tra trajectory for the army. And that was like a secret weapon back in 1946, you know, the upper hand that the Americans and the Allies had against uh, Germany. I think um, as the transistor was um, invented, it was inevitable that, yes, chipsets would come next and that they would fill, um, you know, computers and, and larger rooms, uh, and that miniaturization was inevitable. Uh, these computers got smaller. They didn't cover, you know, walls and floors uh, of buildings, but actually got to the point where you could put them up against one wall. And then in the 70s, microcomputers and mini computers um, going up against, you know, part of a wall. Uh, and then we got to the point where we could carry these and lug these around with us. Um, Post-1984 with the launch of the Apple Mac. Um, and uh, you know, we started to lug these computers around with us and uh, now we wear them. You know, Digital Glass, for example, Google's latest product uh, enables us to have lots of sensors and lots of chips uh, in our digital eyeglasses. So what's the next step? You know, we've gone from luggables to wearables. Um, are bearables, you know, the next phase of innovation? And, uh, you know, how much smaller are we going to get? What's the next quantum leap for computing?